Hello, my name is Sean Sands. This is Imperator Rome, the new game from Paradox Game uh, Studios, Development Studios, the makers of Your Paper Cells 4 and Crusader Kings 2 and Grand Strategy, just as a general thing that exists in the world. Uh, I want to send a thanks out to them. I'm uh, recording this a week before the game officially launches. Um, so uh, thanks to uh, Paradox, uh, they did provide me the code for this preview. Uh, this is not a sponsor uh, video, though. Um, it is just an opportunity to take a look at the game ahead of time. Uh, it's also not a review. I'll have some more thoughts on my feelings specifically about the game uh, moving on. But this is a let's play. That's what this is. This is playing Macedon uh, in uh, the game. I spent a while trying to figure out who I wanted to play as. And of course, you know, Rome came up and Egypt came up like there's some really core good ones in there um, those turn tended to be uh, a little uh, easy is the wrong word like they just uh, I, I wanted to have something that had some element of uh, a little bit more uncertainty around that I figure a lot of people are probably going to be playing Rome and Egypt as well um, I also played a game uh, briefly I haven't played any game all the way through but I played a little of Sparta I also played a little uh, over here as Apidania in modern day uh, Portugal uh, to try and get some flavor of things I've had some time to spend with the game um, and Mastodon felt like a nice sort of in between it's uh, it's a very stable it's clearly the powerhouse in the region it is a regional power rather than a local power or a city state but it is also has some threats around it um, Thrace obviously is the most, the closest direct, uh, uh, sort of sizable nation. Um, but we start the game with an alliance with Thrace, which is nice, uh, making the big threat in the region Phrygia for us. Um, but Phrygia has their own problems to worry about, uh, in Egypt and the Seleucid Empire. Uh, and in fact, those two nations, uh, in particular, uh, where are we at here? Uh, guarantee us, I believe. Yeah, the Seleucids, uh, the Seleucids, and the and the Egyptians uh, guarantee us. So uh, Phrygia is um, motivated to not start a war with us, um, and Phrygia uh, certainly uh, will eventually have the ability to do that uh, because they also have as uh, their um, subjects, uh, among numerous others, um, Athens. In fact, we can kind of take a look here and see that Phrygia has some um, tributaries, some some subjects here uh, uh, in Athens and in this area. Um, and they also have a variety of other uh, holdings as well. Uh, Macedonia, not to be entirely outdone with that. We also have Euboea, uh, uh, as well as Corinthos. Um, and to the north, we have... Um, who is that? Uh, City of Alexandria in Paonia. I'm going to mangle a lot of these pronunciations. Uh, those are those are our direct subjects as Macedonia. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the setup. I'm going to start uh, at the beginning of the game here because I actually had, did a separate video which just went up as well, uh, sort of a beginner's guide to all the different elements of the UI and what exists within those and what I focus on at the very beginning. So if you're interested uh, to, to kind of get a sense of what all these different um, uh, screens and menus uh, uh, mean, what, uh, you know, how power is uh, determined, um, how to increase stability, how to do technology, stuff like that, I encourage you to check that out. Um, even just for fun before your own first game. But I'm going to do my basic setup here as I've still gotten used to it. And that'll still take a few minutes anyway. Uh, so things I'm noting specifically here, right? We have a treasury problem. We are losing 1.74 gold per month. So I want to get, uh, get that locked in. Um, we also are probably going to want to expand earlier rather than later. I don't see any... Uh, immediate reason that we don't want to try and take advantage of our sizable uh, presence in the region. Uh, so I want to kind of start encroaching down here towards Sparta through these smaller um, 
Hellenistic cultures, uh, which we are also a Hellenistic culture, so uh, integrating them shouldn't be a huge problem. Obviously, we want to we want to be cautious about starting something with Phrygia before we're ready, um, and we want to also start thinking about uh, integrating some of uh, our subjects as well. So that's my initial plan. We have a sizable army made up of a decent uh, mix of. Uh, archers, heavy infantry, like cavalry, so let's grab ourselves a commander. Uh, I'm going to, ugh, kind of stuck here. So I restarted, for, if you go in and you watch the um, uh, watch the beginner's guide, uh, you'll see a different start than this one, and rather than just continuing from there, I restarted the game, so I'd have something to kind of run with. Uh, but we do not have great choices for our commander here. Alexander Antipatrid is our best choice, but a problematic choice because he is a pretender to the throne and will slowly lose loyalty over time. Uh, he is popular, which means uh, and, and has some prominence, which I believe means he will be quicker to convert uh, the uh, army cohorts to his cause rather than uh, the cause of Macedon. But that said, I think it is worth risking in this case. I'm going to put them in a fake like stance. Uh, I, do, I want... Do I want all these ships? Is actually a very good question. I can build triremes. I'm not planning on doing any major invasions until we really start thinking about Crete. Um, though we could in the short term. I think I'm going to cut this in half. And I think I'm going to get rid of half my fleet just so I don't have that additional tax or the upkeep requirements for my treasury. So I won't put some. Well, let's make sure before we do that, let's make sure check our economy. So we are spending 1.92 on fleet maintenance. Reduce that reasonably by half. Yeah, yeah, I think that's worth it. We'll have to wait for that to update uh, at the turn of the month. Um, <clears throat> I am not going to dive straight into ideas because I want to spend my first 180 oratory power on establishing a claim, uh, and I'm inclined to do it against, um, uh, Boeotia, Bo Bo Boeotia, Boeotia, these guys, I'm inclined to do it against these guys. Um, let's see, they have... They won't have any diplomacy yet. They're guaranteed by Phrygia, though. So we might not want to... We might have to give them a pass. Maybe it'll be um, Atolia here. Let's see. What are our regions? Provinces. Um, we have Atolia. So we would like to consolidate that region. Which we can't totally do because part of Boeotia... Boeotia uh, is exists in there, um, but we can take some of it through Aetolia. Uh, that's all Epirus, and we do not have any holdings in Epirus. Hellas, uh, well, that's our... Oh, no, we do have that, but we're backed up against our subject of, um, Euboea. Yeah, I think we'll probably create our first... Are they guaranteed? Phrygia. Phrygia! Phrygia, you're a real pain in the butt. Um, hmm. Interesting. So Phrygia is guaranteeing... I didn't see them guaranteeing all this stuff. Who else is Phrygia guaranteeing? Okay, let's take a look here. Phrygia is guaranteeing just those two. I don't want to start out fighting Phrygia necessarily, so maybe we will start encroaching into Epirus instead. They're not guaranteed by anyone. Uh, I don't necessarily want to start encroaching in a new province. What else do we have? We can also look up here at Illyria. This is Talantia. Are they guaranteed by anybody? They have an alliance. They have subjects. So they are allied with Epirus. 
a little bit more of a fight. They have, they only have six cohorts. Epirus has 12 cohorts. So I have a total force of around 20,000 plus, plus, eight more. So they would have a total force limit greater than us. Interesting. All right, maybe we will start with, okay, maybe we will start with, um, no, we're not gonna start with that. Okay, come back to that. Uh, government, this all looks fine. I'm not really gonna tinker it here. Uh, technology, right away we can select two of these. Uh, I'm inclined to get property tax to crank out uh, some money. And our civilization is, we have a good amount of slaves, right? That's, so slaves are where tax come from. So we didn't really talk about this in the beginner guide. Um, each type of citizen or each type of pop uh, has a different purpose. Uh, slaves uh, provide a base tax. Um, tribesmen, which will be relatively uncommon for us, but more far more common in, in some of the tribal uh, the settled and the um, uh, migrating tribes uh, provide some tax and some manpower, but at a much smaller value. Freemen provide the local manpower, um, and citizens provide research points and commerce values, and you can promote up through those ranks. So when we're thinking about tax, <clears throat> there are two ways that money happens. Tax income and commerce income. Tax income is generated by slaves. Commerce income is generated by citizens. There is a value to, over time, increasing, moving people up the uh, strata of, of the, the society um, in that citizens can provide value, but also provide research, and research is ultimately the power driving force uh, out there. That said, we have a good number of um, so we grabbed that, right? We did grab that first technology. Yes, I think we did. Uh, I'm inclined to get technology speed as well. Yes, I think I'm going to do that. Okay. I do want to get an omen. I'm going to crank up the tax rate. That's very good. At some point, I'd love to do a sacrifice to the gods, but that's not going to happen right now. Uh, let's see. I don't think I'm going to reduce any of my payments out there. Uh, I do want to change my stance to a mercantile, mercantile stance. Uh, that will a, make it cheaper for us to create trade routes and it'll also continue to increase that commerce income. Um, and it's not a ton that we're getting through commerce. Most of our money's coming through tax, but still, I think that is a thing I don't, I don't like the bellicose stance. Um, although we do have a alliance already with Thrace and they like us some, a good bit. What we're going to be looking for early on is for Phrygia to start sort of crumbling. Um, hmm. I wouldn't mind. And we're probably going to want to increase our, just our flat out crease, increase our army size. Uh, if we attack, we will probably then attack Epirus directly, uh, at least for right now. That would not, well, no, it would still drag Talantia's um, subjects in either way. All right, let's 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 think trade routes. Uh, we might have to, wait. oh yeah, um, spending, so you activate a trade route by spending civic power. We used all our civic power on technology, so we're going to hold off on that for a minute. Uh, we can put somebody in charge of the boat, but I guess... Uh, we'll put Andrew Minis here in charge of the boat, even though he's basically terrible at everything. That's a bad admiral. So we don't have great military leaders right now, so I think we do have to be a little bit cautious early on. Um, so I am going to... Here's a question I have. Do these guys have access to iron? No. So that's important. 
Uh, neither does it look like. So neither of these two nations have access to iron. The reason that's valuable, important information, whereas we have the do. Where's that? Iron's here. Um, so iron allows for heavy infantry units, which means that our army, even at equal size, is likely stronger than both uh, Talantia and Epirus, Um because we have heavy infantry and heavy infantry are uh, fundamentally strong. So if you look at these archers, they have a uh, um, uh, damage, uh, you know, they don't really have many damage bonuses except to light elephants. Uh, whereas da -da 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 -da, um, these guys have some pretty important damage bonuses to, um, to light infantry. They don't have a damage bonus to archers, um, but they have a base damage that's just much higher, right? I want to say, where do I see base damage? Hmm. Morale damage taken is minus 10, plus 25, so they take far less morale damage. Uh, they don't necessarily put a stronger hurt on. I feel like that's not true. I'm going to have to keep learning about this stuff. Uh, interesting. Anyway, they can really only... Can they even field... Um, they can't build triremes. They can't field light cavalry because they don't have horses. They can build triremes, but they can't... Again, can't field light cavalry. So pretty much all they're going to be able to build are these... Eloy, right, the archers, basically. Um, and these guys, probably. Maybe. I'm not sure. We'll have to kind of take a look once we see what their army composition is. Okay, unpausing. We want to get to 25 civic power. I think we are going to go ahead. Do we want to? Go ahead and just sort of start taking into. Hmm. Boy, I really want Boisha. These are subjects, right? Yeah. Oh, that's just. It flat out is part of Phrygia. Okay, interesting. Um. Kia. How long are they guaranteed for the wars of the Diadochi? Diadochi, Diadochi, Diadochi. Not sure. Having built the largest empire the world had ever seen, Alexander the Great died suddenly ten years ago. With no clear successor to the empire, his generals, the Diadochi, or successors, have since fought over Alexander's spoils. Our ruler, Cassandra of Macedon, as this guy here. Uh, is the son of Antipater, who was the most senior of Alexander's generals and was given the honor to guard his heirs until they came of age. Upon the death of his father, Cassander killed his appointed regent with help from his father's enemies. He then proceeded to kill the heirs and their mothers. So he's a pretty great guy. Antigonus, the former satrap of Phrygia, is perhaps the most successful of the successors. Antigonus... Uh, Antigonus, yeah, has also meddled with the Greek states and controls the fortress of Chalcis that was once ours, but success breeds enemies and he now stands alone and vulnerable. So we have gained claims on Alexander's former empire. Um, they will go away with the death of our ruler. Interesting. Uh, we also have some requests to import. Ooh. I don't see us providing iron. Who is this for? Hellenistic power of Eobia. Oh, that's our um, that's our subject. Do we have a surplus of iron? It's requesting import from the province of Atolia. Oh, we do have a surplus of iron. That surplus provides us additional manpower, but I don't care too much about that. This way you can earn us some money. We're already earning extra money. We're up to 3.02, um, but we can turn that into an army. So I am inclined to recruit more. I'm actually inclined to recruit a second army. That's just... <clears throat> 
We're not up to 25 civic power. Uh, let's start with... Let's build down here so that we can get access to that iron. You can only build, so you'll see here, if you go into the macro builder, if we want to recruit cohorts and we want to use iron, we can only recruit them into areas that have iron. Um, so Atolia, which we just discovered had that bonus. What can we, we can buy, recruit the Seoli. Can't recruit, recruit camels, um, obviously. We are so aren't gonna be able to recruit boar elephants. We can build trains, triremes. Uh, in this one spot. Uh, so, we can do that. We can do those guys. This is light cavalry, right? And that's it. Okay. So, I think we will build a. Build these guys. Okay. Now, we don't really have any good people we can put in positions as generals so this is essentially going to be sort of a reinforcing army if anything uh, I do think then we can start to put our ideas together because we want to get the bonus um, powers uh, so let's add our martial ethos to morale of armies uh, Thrace our ally is requesting wine from Macedonia and uh, they Misapia wants glass. I mean, Thrace happy, and we can sell that too. So having what's happening here um, <clears throat> is some of those, you remember earlier we had a surplus of iron because we had that little plus one there. Uh, let's see, do we still have any? Okay, so we have surpluses of wine and glass, which we have essentially traded away now. So this means that what's happening here is we're producing two in Pella. Oh, we still have a surplus. Um, and one in Syra. Uh, now, having that access to that specific trade good has provided us a benefit. So for fish, it's local population growth. Local population meaning the province as a whole. This whole province is getting, because you see, if we click any city in the province, we have that fish. If we click outside the province, well, they have fish, so that's not fair. They have a lot more fish. The so fish is common. Um, but some of these are getting a, a bonus, which means we're producing or importing more than just the one. And you get an additional bonus for having a surplus. So having any grain gives us local population growth of 0.1. For each surplus we have, you get 0 0.05. Since we have two surplus, uh, you get an additional 0.1. So this grain is providing us a total of 0.2% population growth bonus per month, which is good. Um, also, you get additional bonuses for some trade goods if it's in the capital. So we're getting manpower out of this. Grain's great. Um, wine is pretty good. This is actually, we don't want to trade all the way, all of our wine, um, because that free man happy, free man happiness uh, is good. Um, surplus glass, commerce income. Excellent. Love all of this. Uh, that said, if we go to the trade screen, um, do, 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 do. You can see that each of those exports, uh, one of wine, one of glass, one of iron, is netting us a good chunk of money per month. Now, armies, again, work differently here than they do in EU4 in that there really is no force limit in the way that we have thought of force limit before. It is not if I reach a certain threshold of troops, um, it becomes really hard to sustain. Um, so, for example, if you had a country this size, in EU4, you might have a force limit, I don't know, um, let's say 20, 20. Um, and if you had less than 20, you paid a minimum maintenance, but for each uh, uh, unit you built over 20, um, you had a uh, maintenance penalty. It doesn't work like that here. Um, so it really is just a flat balance between our treasury, uh, our manpower and the size of the uh, army we want to field. Um, there are different things that become tricky if you have very, very large armies, uh, but it's not pure maintenance focus. Do I want to get heavy? What are these guys? They're essentially heavy uh, cavalry, right? This is light cavalry, this is heavy cavalry. Um, and they add a huge amount of attrition weight, but they do a lot of damage. They are expensive to maintain, though. I think I just want some light cavalry. Just having the access to the cavalry is good. An unwelcome gift. Uh, Eupolemus 
a loyal servant of the, I'm not even trying a loyal servant of the state, yet a man of questionable aesthetic talent has commissioned a statue in honor of Cassander. Citizens gather from far and wide, and when the unveiling takes place, Eupolemus simply stands arms folded with a small smile plastered across his face as the crowd collectively withdraws in abject terror. Horror, terror, terror. Uh, Eupolemus is the head of that family. He's rich. Uh, he has 600 personal wealth. He has some traits. His popularity is reducing, but he has a huge amount of loyalty. So I'm not sure why he's done this to us. Uh, we could lose some popularity by shouting, this is hideous. Uh, or we can, we're going to lose some popularity no matter what, but uh, we can lose less popularity uh, and lose some loyalty from him. He is the head of the army, is that correct? No? What? Oh, he is the Archisum. Okay, we're going to spend some time with that one. He is the Archisomatophylax. Archisomatophylax? Archisomatophylax. Archi He's this dude. Which means that his impact is morale of armies. Um, losing loyalty will not reduce his ability to do that. I'm not that worried about a 20% drop. We don't have a ton of popularity to spare. So I'm willing to take a little bit of a hit and take his precious gift that he sent us and destroy it to the ground. Uh, let's get our second trade route. What do we want? We have a lot of options here. This is actually real nice. Could just get local tax. I think we're doing decent on income right now. I'm not inclined to the earthenware research points. I want research points. I'm gonna bring in earthenware from the Eastern Delta. This will give us a little bit of additional money, uh, but most importantly, it will increase our ability to uh, make research progress. At 42.3 research points per month, uh, we're researching at a rate of 0.9% per month, which is not great, but fine. All right, we need to put somebody in charge of this army, but we have really no one good to choose from. Uh, let's put Philip. No, yeah, I guess. Is he a pretender? I mean, he's part of our family. God, we have really bad choices here. Um, I see that Talentia is building a fort. We're going to go ahead and move. What's our attrition? 23, so we should be fine. Let's move you down here. Uh, Byzantium is requesting olives. Slave happiness? I think we're fine with happiness. Uh, let's set you up. You're going to be famous as well. And let's build a few more units down here. I want some, want some archers. And some more like cavalry. Set it down over time. Back up to 180. Oh, he's down to just five cohorts. Okay, he disbanded most of his army. I think we're in good shape. He's at three cohorts. Okay, so they start with a lot more than they felt like keeping. And they can build that back up fairly quickly. Um, we are going to covertly fabricate a claim on... No, 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 not them. Uh, let's, let's fabricate a claim on Epirus if we're going to do it. No, because we'll take this quicker. I plan to only use this as sort of a fortifying army. I thought you were less than 21. Oh, the supply limit's only 13. Um, we need to split this army. They'll still have... They have a huge... Oh, they're getting killed, I bet, on... Uh, supply. So we are going to fabricate a claim up here, I think. Illyria? All right, let's look at Illyria. What has Illyria got? Illyria produces salt, earthenware, I like... 
Olives is fine. Leather is okay. Furs is good. Fish is good. Whereas Epirus provides wood. Honey, marble. Citizen and happy test is bad. I think it's six and one half dozen the other. Show me the province. I think it's going to be fairly easy to take this. We can kind of take it all at once. And we're going to grab this. They do have more allies now. I did not look at Masapia and Abria. Epirus. Oh, Masapia is over here. They're not likely to... The Bria who has seven cohorts. So we need to be careful. I don't think a Bria or Mesopia. They have 14 cohorts, but no ships. <clears throat> Why can't you guys go here? Thank you. Can you go here? Not sure where you're giving me. Maybe I'd selected the triremes. Uh, leather, light infantry defense. I'm not inclined to do this. This and well, we're about to go to war with you, so we're not going to do that. Not that worried about freedom and promotion cost. So we'll accept their offer, and they want to. I don't want to give up light infantry defense, and we're going to go to war with you. Um, so no, I think that's it. I think that's it for now. All right. Some kind of commander. Again, not great. I'll take the reinforcement speed here. Also, he's not super popular. Jeez. These commanders, though. Uh, we can't declare war till the 16th, and then we'll see how bad it looks. We can also call our allies, which is nice. Um, they'll reinforce us. So we're probably... Probably good? I think we're going to try it. Yeah. Come on in, Thrace. This is a big board to start with. Okay, he cannot advance there because this is a fort. And we will wait for these guys to reinforce here before we make any kind of push into Apparus. Uh, we're not doing light infantry defense, you guys. More requests, light infantry defense. I don't want to give away, and I don't want to give away my army maintenance costs. I want to keep those benefits. I'm just gonna ignore those until I see what I like. Oh, this is impassable terrain, that's why. Oh, look at that, uh, what do you call it? Attrition, high attrition. So we wanna get to a plate, okay, so that is not a fort. I'm gonna hold here, that supply limit's only nine. Actually, let's push on through. Oh, we can't, cause that is a fort. So let's do it like this. Okay, we need to keep an eye out here. So this is going to be the main fort, right? This is a level one fort, so our 9,000 guys should be plenty. This will separate uh, the northern armies from the southern armies, and we can put our push in here. That I'm fine with. Mm, supply limit is 32, and this is this a fort? Let's add a couple of. Okay, we're good here. We're gonna let them push in. So whenever you get this, you get a battle imminent. Uh, it'll show you who's likely to win. 
Uh, they have a worse, somehow they have a worse commander than we do. They do not. They have a commander with eight. Um, I'm going to build a few more units, I think. Just in general. Just to help them reinforce this. We're going to wait till they're committed. And then we're definitely going to, they're going to show up on August 9th. We're looking for them to be locked in. And they get they balked. I figured they probably would not commit to that. This is a fort, so we have our 10,000 guys here. Now, if you saw our previous video, you know these guys in gray um, are not specifically uh, excellent thraces on the way. Uh, these are mercenaries that you can hire when you have enough money. Uh, we do not have enough money, and it's unlikely that our um, enemies have the money either. Nope. Absolutely not. Okay, they are up to 9,000. That is a sizable force. Can we get out? We're still... It's not indicating whether we would win that. I'm inclined to do this. Okay. Don't think they slowed us down enough to stop us. We're gonna get here. We cannot attack, I don't believe. Because we can't go here because that fort is blocking our way. Any chance they're gonna finish that? Come on in. But we can't attack them directly. And we are having huge attrition problems if we just sit here. The advantage we have is that them being there this right you you're the six I'm gonna move this guy back a bit I don't mind you coming in against my 11,000 I think we're fine yeah oh well hang on okay we tricked we got them to commit which they should not have done. So let's look at the army composition. Uh, we obviously have a lot more. They are in a deception position, which is has no bonus against our phalanx. Our phalanx does not have a bonus against deception. Um, light infantry, they have, yeah, as we suspected, their army is largely composed of light infantry and archers, where we have like cavalry and heavy uh, heavy infantry, which is just much better composition-wise. Uh, we have a bonus for our um, for our general being better than... Oh, they have a bonus for their general being better than ours. Same discipline, but we should absolutely destroy them. Um, and we are well on our way to doing exactly that. Uh, so, yeah. About a little better than double casualties that is what we were hoping to see uh, let's see where are you going no oh, why would you go there oh Lord. okay I guess we're just losing this guy didn't realize he was gonna go through that way uh, disagreement on the highest level Polybos, Polybius, Polybios, Polybios, a man of sound reputation, and Alexander, a nobleman of great virtue, have recently started to spar furiously whilst attending the court. Such behavior is unbecoming of these people of stature. However, we have called, been called upon to take a side in this latest conflict. Polybios or Alexander? Uh, we can make friends with one of them. Alexander is the general. Is a general. Is he any good? Is he our better general? He's our better general. So I think we want to side with him. Increase his loyalty. I'm willing to sacrifice our researcher's lo loyalty. Uh, and we'll make friends with the general of our main army. This is good. I am fine with this. Uh, they seem to be attacking. I don't know that that's wise, but I'm perfectly open to them doing so. Yeah, we knew that. We walked right into them. And they are going to go ahead with the attack. We're still fine down here. But 
Okay. I think now we are at the point. Oh, is that 8,000 coming in to here? I'm willing to let them throw themselves on my swords to the extent that they want to. Can we get there? November 22nd. If we go now, we'll arrive on the 29th. We would cap, uh, get ahead. We'd be able to take out that three stack. As long as that eight stack does not... Why does it think we're going to lose that? They're locked in. They're going to be going on the 22nd. We're arriving on the 29th. I think we're fine. Um, I tell you what. That's uh, 40 minutes, a kind of longer episode to get us started, but I'm going to go ahead and put a stop in here. Um, hopefully you're enjoying Imperator Rome, the early look at Imperator Rome, which uh, releases a week from the date this is published. Um, going to continue this, see if we can't uh, go ahead and win this war and make a run of it with Mazendon. Until next time, as always, my name is Sean Sands. Thank you for joining me. We will see you again real soon.